Hi everyone, welcome to the Winthrop Wealth third quarter 2020 market review and outlook. I'm Andrew Murphy, Senior Director of Portfolio Management. In today's video, I'll be going over some of the major events of the third quarter and providing context for our market outlook and portfolio positioning. The full written version is now available on our website at winthropwealth.com. Over the past several weeks, we've enjoyed speaking with many of you to provide updates to financial plans, the markets, and investment portfolios. Our entire team at Winthrop Wealth is here to help you navigate through these periods with proactive and customized solutions. Of course, we hope that you and your families continue to stay safe and stay healthy. As always, please do not hesitate to contact us if you need anything. We are committed to helping you live life to the fullest, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. And with that, let's get to the video. Let's start by taking a look at the U.S. equity market. This is a chart of the S&P 500, and the market increased by 8.9% in the third quarter. So after declining by 19.6% in Q1, the market rebounded by 20.5% in the second quarter, and now by 8.9% in Q3. And we continue to highlight that 2020 has been a roller coaster year as the market fell by nearly 34% from February 19th to March 23rd, before increasing by almost 52% from then until now. The market is now up by 5.6% for the year, and the S&P 500 crossed above 3,500 for the first time ever in August, before reaching a new all-time high on September 2nd at 3,581. The market has been and will continue to remain sensitive to new information on COVID cases, progress on treatments and vaccines, fiscal stimulus, monetary policy, economic data, and the upcoming elections. And we'll touch on these topics during our market outlook, but before then, let's move to the bond market. This is a year-to-date overview of the fixed income markets with the Bloomberg Barclays U.S. Aggregate Bond Index, or the AG, in blue, and the 10-year Treasury yield in orange. The AG, which acts as a proxy for the investment-grade bond market, increased by 0.6% in the quarter, as a decline in credit spreads was positive for returns. Interest rates are at historically low levels and stayed in a narrow trading range as the 10-year Treasury ended the quarter at 0.68%. And now we'll take a look at the U.S. Treasury yield curve. The yield curve is a graph of a Treasury bond's maturity and its rate of return for various time periods, with maturities ranging from three months to 30 years. The yield curve does have a positive slope with long-term yields above short-term yields, although really all yields are at historically low levels, with the three-month Treasury at nine basis points, or 0.09%, the 10-year at 0.68%, and the 30-year at 1.46%. The big news from the Fed in the third quarter came in August, as Chair Jerome Powell formally announced a change to the FOMC's statement on longer-run goals and monetary policy strategy to reflect average inflation targeting. So what is average inflation targeting? Well, historically, the Fed has typically increased interest rates when inflation started to rise toward their old 2% objective. But under the new policy, the FOMC now seeks to achieve inflation that averages 2% over time. So essentially what this means is that interest rates are likely to stay lower for a longer period of time. In fact, most FOMC participants do not expect to raise rates until at least 2024. In the last several months, the Fed's policies and guidance have helped aid the economy, lower interest rates, calm credit markets, and boost equity prices. And the Fed's new framework should continue to aid these areas moving forward. Please see our client question of the month on the Fed, which details the key entities and the impact that monetary policy has on the economy, interest rates, and stock prices. The United States entered into an economic recession in February, and while the second quarter GDP reading was the worst in recorded U.S. history, it's important to remember that the economy likely bottomed in April and has been recovering since. Third quarter GDP reading, which will be released right before the election, should be very strong, 
and most estimates expect real GDP to reach its pre-pandemic level at some point in 2021 or early 2022. Going forward, the magnitude of reopening, consumer activity, and recovery in the labor market will vary based on the prevalence of COVID-19 cases. We firmly agree with the Fed's assessment that the path of the economy will depend significantly on the course of the virus. And now let's go to our outlook. Our market outlook is typically based on four segments, monetary policy, economic growth, corporate earnings, and valuation. In the current period, we added data on the coronavirus and fiscal stimulus to help shape our viewpoint. The market rally since March was driven by progress on COVID, massive amounts of monetary and fiscal stimulus, and optimism on the reopening of the economy. Going forward, we can still count on an enormous amount of monetary stimulus from the Fed, however other areas are not as clear. Another round of fiscal stimulus appears deadlocked, and it remains to be seen if a workable vaccine can arrive before a second wave of the virus. On top of all that, the presidential election is only a few short weeks away. So we are expecting more volatility. Putting everything together, our short-term outlook is cautious given the stock market reached new all-time highs despite several material risks, including an increased spread of the virus, the relationship between the U.S. and China, and of course, the upcoming election. We shifted portfolios more defensively by trimming equities as the market continued to rise in July and August. This does not mean we are forecasting an imminent decline, but rather we believe it is prudent portfolio and risk management to take some profits and to be prepared for upcoming volatility. On the equity side, we are tilted toward high quality US large cap stocks. And on the fixed income side, we remain focused on achieving ballast, stability and income while accounting for short-term cash needs. As always, we will continue to utilize our time-tested investment process based on risk management, asset allocation, and security selection as we monitor new developments and maintain critical flexibility to take advantage of opportunities as they arise. Thank you for watching today's video. Please visit our website at winthropwealth.com to view our latest commentaries, including our client question of the month pieces on the presidential election, the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Debt. As always, please let us know if you have any questions or comments, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon.